Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the much requested way in which our Commission's Chief Ben painted up the Space Marines half of the Leviathan box. Now you recently saw how Ken did his Tyranids, and we're going to see how Ben painted up the Space Wolves in literally a couple of sessions, so they were able to get gaming as soon as possible. So we're looking at speed painting here, ways in which we can get big armies on the table, looking cool to play with as quick as we can. I've asked Ben to send me the recipe, so we'll go through it step by step, and then at the end, he's got a few tips and tricks that he think will help you out. So let's paint. We're gonna get all the models glued onto their bases before priming, and if it's possible to leave the shoulder pads off, then we will do. See, it's easy for me to do on this intercess model I'm using, um, but I know a lot of the miniatures in the Leviathan box, in specifically, uh, the shoulder pads are attached. It's very simple to paint them in situ with the brush if you need to. Speed painting, ideally you're going to be doing things in batches because that just makes it more and more efficient. And when you've got everything ready to go, Ben gave them a rattle can base coat using Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now we are going to be using an airbrush later on in this process, but initially getting the base coat down with an aerosol can is the most time efficient way of doing it. Lots of companies do them, there's tons of great colours out there. Uh, ben chose Mechanica Standard Grey because he was trying to get a good decent match uh, for Bran Redmore's great company from uh, one of the Forge World books. The next step for the armour was to use an airbrush and apply a highlight of pale grey blue by Vallejo Model Colour. Now this is relatively thick paint so we needed to dilute it probably three to four drops of thinner for every one drop of paint. And I'm spraying about 25 PSI here. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle, and I'm using our signature series Infinity by Harder and Steenbeck. But you may, you're gonna to need to adjust to your actual setup where you're painting and all the rest of it. And we're looking to cover approximately 50% of the panels here with a very general highlight. So we're not worrying too much about doing tons of rendering and, and creating the shapes. We're just sort of making 50% of the panels lighter as if the light was shining at them from the front from above. Then for a final highlight, we're going to use a very similarly named paint, but this is Vallejo model color, pale blue. And it's a slight change, but it's definitely a noticeable one uh, on the miniatures and it really helps give them that light, slightly blue, well, exactly what the colors are called, right? Pale blue, gray, anyway, cl clues in the name, but that type of Space Wolf color. So if you like it, this is a really, really nice way of achieving it. And having seen them all as a force like on the table, I think it looks absolutely lovely. And it's very different to, particularly when you play a lot of heresy like we do, it's very different looking gray. Now for the yellow pads, I'm gonna airbrush them here because it's easy for me to, because I have the pad separate. But Ben on all of his, he just brush painted this on. And this yellow to begin with was um, Vallejo Game Color. It's one of their heavy body paints and it's uh, gold brown. Any sandy, dark yellow would be absolutely fine. We're gonna use the exact paints Ben has used, but he was very deliberate when he was giving me it, saying that you, in the vast majority of them, just use what you have, you'll be absolutely fine. Now I didn't have flash kits yellow, for instance. Um, so to do the highlight, I've just sprayed on a little bit of a, a light yellow, and then I glazed over bad moon yellow contrast to get the right yellow. Um, but flash kits yellow is what Ben used. And then for the white, he just used Screaming Skull straight over the pan. I hate using Screaming Skull, but I've done it because that's what he said to do. Now, once the pads are done, we're going to gloss varnish them up and apply the decals to them. I'll link up the video dedicated to going through efficient, easy ways to apply your decals. This is where a lot of the heavy lifting is now done with this scheme. We're going to do some sponge chipping, some weathering. And we're using a little piece of sponge here and we're using a dark brown color, Rhinox Hide by Games Workshop. And we're just gonna work our way around pretty much all the edges, just lightly tapping on and creating these chips. What this is gonna do is, rather than that, that classic way of thinking of base coat, wash, layer back up, highlight all the rest of it, edges need to be lighter, so on and so forth. We're approaching it in a different way and equally, if not more efficient way, but a different way to patch what you've seen. And using these dark chipping colors against the light armor, very, very effective. This is probably the longest stage of the whole thing, and we're only talking a minute or two 
per miniature. Um, just taking your time, working through, working your way around, just making sure there's not too much paint on your sponge so you're not having to press too hard or too light to get it to come off. I also just wanted to say a huge thank you to those of you that support us over on Patreon. You're allowing myself and Andy to do videos on here and over on there each week um, and also getting other people to come on and do cool things for us and that's simply to do with the support that you have been able to give us. Likes and subscribes on here are a big help as well, so thank you. It's quite a relaxing stage this as well, I found when I was doing it. Now I'm using a reverse grip tweezers here as well, so you're not having to pinch them to hold the sponge in. And I suspect if you're doing that over, you know, squads at a time, little things like that's probably going to help too. And then we go in with our paintbrush. So first time we're using a paintbrush in this job so far uh, with the Rhinox hide. And now we're sort of just going to tippy tap chip along the edges. Not all the edges, just the sort of key ones, uh, as Ben refers to them as, as high value areas of the model. Sort of areas where the people are going to look basically when they glance at the miniature. And this is edge highlighting, but just with a darker color, really. Um, it's also important because sometimes the sponge can't get to certain areas because of the way the miniature is oriented, particularly when we paint them when they're already glued to the base. So the brush gives you that opportunity to get in there. But say it's a very relaxing way of painting, it's very quick, and you get an awful lot of bang for your buck with this. So you can see I've been around the model, sponged, followed by the brush, and it's really easy when you look at this marine now to identify the shapes of those armour panels, where they separate into the next panel, and so on and so forth. And we've managed to achieve that with effectively two paints, the lightest grey and then the brown. For the black parts of the model, I'm just going to base coat them black. Uh, I'm using Velo model color black here. You just use whatever black that you like. Uh, recently, I've been using the newer black contrast paint. I think it's called Black Legion. Really, really good paint for this sort of job, um, particularly for like the connective ribbing and stuff on marine armor. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very good coverage. And then to highlight it, Ben just says mix in one of your pale blues to create a gray. You see, the first one I did here wasn't quite bright enough. We, With this sort of scheme, you need high value contrast. So your highlights need to be a lot lighter than the area they're next to to get the most impact. So I just added a little bit more of the pale blue in. And again, just a little bit of that tippy tappy chipping. So the decals were all done and dried. Pop them back on the model. And just going to unify the finish on the model now using a satin varnish before we do our metallics. I'm using uh, Ammo by MIG. Use whatever satin you like. The metals, now this is a really big departure for me. Um, I always black out an area before I apply metals. Ben's like, this is speed painting, you do not have time, get this done, it looks absolutely fine. So we're using a dark silver metallic here by Pro Acryl and just painting in those areas that we want to be silver. You notice I blacked in the silver on the bolt rifle anyway, because it was just painting the whole thing. So it was just as easy to black them in there. And then for a highlight, he's mixed that dark silver metallic with their normal silver. Just doing a few little highlights. This is something that metals really do benefit from. And once dry, I'm going to use another contrast paint. This is a black Templar watered down and used just like a wash. This is one of the favorite things I did or I, I remembered or learned from doing this scheme. When contrast first came out, I tried using them like this and I really enjoyed the effect I got on metals. And then for whatever reason, it just gone out of my mind. I didn't do it anymore. So it was brilliant to sort of relearn this part. And it's something I'll be doing a lot more of in my own army projects going forwards. Then for the gold, base coating it Pro Acryl Copper. Don't know why, mine was drying loads very, very quickly, so uh, to water it down a little. Then a highlight with Pro Acryl Rich Gold. Simple highlights here, we're just leaving that copper in the recesses basically. And then a final highlight using Light Bronze. So actually this is 
because we're going to give it a wash in a minute. So there's actually four stages on the gold, which is quite a lot, but I suppose the gold details are pretty minimal. Again with marines, you're not exactly painting many, are you? And then again a wash with the Black Templar. So it's a nice way of reducing the amount of paints we're going to use, but you still get the effects that you want. The final stage, well more or less the final stage, is to do the eye lenses. Now this is where myself and Ben had a little bit, not of an argument, but a discussion. Uh, ben did the lenses on his Marines properly, in inverted commas, in the sense of that couple of colours, line highlight underneath, white dot in the dark area, so on and so forth. My argument with him was that is not speed painting. It is speed painting for Ben because he's painted thousands of lenses, if not tens of thousands of lenses, as a commission painter of over a decade. So he can do it very quickly. When I did the White Scars Army for the Horus Heresy uh, second edition launch last year up at Games Workshop, I ran out of time essentially on that project. I needed to send them off in the morning and I hadn't done the lenses yet. So to get all those lenses done in one sitting, I had to simplify it. And for me, that was just applying the base coat color with a white dot on it. So I've chosen there to just do a mix of light green and a dark green to make a mid sort of green, pop it in and then a white dot as you've seen. And I think it's very, very effective. If you are proficient at painting lenses in that traditional way, then go ahead and do it. Again, Ben's argument was it's a real high value area of the miniature, the, 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 the face. So it's worth doing that if you've got the time to do it. And I do agree, but I didn't feel I could include that in a speed painting video because um, for me it's, it's not speed painting. Uh, and the last step, something I've really enjoyed, is using a dark brown here to effectively panel line the miniature, but not every single panel line. So we're not washing the miniature, we're just painting in the recesses in the important areas that we need to really define. Um, so say you can see there the, the, the knee pads, the feet, uh, the backpack, some areas around the face. So this model hasn't really had a wash, the metallics have, but the rest of it hasn't, yet you're still able to identify and separate out all the different panels. I think it's very, very effective. This type of technique, black lining, you might hear it called, um, is something I've recently introduced to my own painting over the last sort of six months, and I really, really like it. I do it in conjunction with pin washing when I'm doing normal army painting, but for this speed painting job, we've left out the wash and we've just done that. I think you'd agree, it's pretty effective. So here's my attempt at Ben's Walls, following that recipe. Um, I am pretty blown away by how good this looks for the time it took to do. And now I know why it only took him a couple of sessions to get that half of the box painted up. But again, these miniatures aren't meant to be viewed necessarily individually close up on a screen like this. We want to look at them in situ, so on the table, en masse. Uh, and I think, I hope you'll agree, they look really, really cool. Uh, the basing is just our usual basing. I'll link a, a video up in the corner about how we go about doing that. So you can see here, there's Ben's done the Terminators, the Dreadnought, and hopefully you can identify all the techniques that we've used on those. There's a couple of other elements. There's the skin, there's the bone, which is on some models, which isn't on this, but that's following a similar pattern. It's choosing a couple of paints, keeping it neat and tidy, and just making sure there's that nice difference between the darkest and the lightest areas. And that's something that Ben really wanted to stress is this high value contrast. So the difference between the dark area and a difference between the light area is really quite far and they're next to each other in a lot of places. And that, when you look at it on the table, has a huge amount of impact. It may not look quite as subtle and as interesting in the hand, but from three foot away, it's exactly what you need. So I hope you've enjoyed this take on it. Um, we're going to be doing some more speed painting videos oh, you know, over the time. We're adding them in now to the sort of program, I guess you call it. And a lot of you have been asking how Ben did his cadence for his guard army. He's writing it up for me. We'll have a stab at that very, very soon. And if there's any other armies that you'd like us to take a look at with this, pop them down in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions about this one in particular. Again, in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you're not already. Thanks ever so much for your support, and I'll see you next time.
If you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.